Taraknath Das or Tarak Nath Das, Bengali, Tarakanatha Dasa, the 15th of June 1884 to the 22nd of December 1958, was an anti-British Bengali Indian revolutionary and internationalist scholar. He was a pioneering immigrant in the west coast of North America and discussed his plans with Tolstoy while organizing the Asian Indian immigrants in favor of the Indian independence movement. He was a professor of political science at Columbia University and a visiting faculty in several other universities. Early life Tarak was born at Majapara, near Kantrapara, in the 24 Parganas district of West Bengal. Coming from a lower middle class family, his father Kalamohan was a clerk at the Central Telegraph Office in Calcutta. Noticing the flair of this brilliant student with the pen, his headmaster encouraged him to appear in an essay contest on the theme of patriotism. Impressed by the quality of the paper by a school boy of 16 years, one of the judges, the barrister P. Mitter, founder of the Anushilan Samiti, asked his associate Satish Chandra Basu to recruit the boy. On passing his entrance examination with very high marks, in 1901, Tarak went to Calcutta and got himself admitted to the well-known General Assembly's institution now Scottish Church College for university studies. In his secret patriotic activity, he found full support from his elder sister Garija. <laughs> Genesis of a mission To stir Bengali enthusiasm, commemoration of the achievements of Raja Sitaram Ray, one of the greatest Bengali Hindu heroes, was introduced as a festival, in addition to Shivaji. In the early months of 1906, Bhaga Jatin or Jatindra Nath Mukherjee was accompanied by Tarak when the former was invited to preside over the Sitaram festival at Muhammadpur in Jessore, the ancient capital of Bengal. On this occasion, during a closeted meeting around Jatin were present, in addition to Tarak, Shrish Chandra Sen, Satendra Sen and Adhar Chandra Laskar, all the four, one after the other, were to leave for higher studies abroad. Nothing was known about the object of this meeting till in 1952 when, during a conversation, Tarak spoke of it. Along with specific higher education, they were to acquire military training and knowledge of explosives. They were especially urged to create a climate of sympathy among people of the free Western countries in favor of India's decision to win freedom. <laughs> Life in North America Disguised as a monk under the name of Tarak Brahmachari, he left for Madras on a lecture tour. After Swami Vivekananda and Bipin Chandra Pal he was the first person in the region who raised such a passion by his patriotic speeches. Among young revolutionaries he particularly inspired Nilakantha Brahmachari, Subramania Shiva and Chidambaram Pillai. In 1905, he went to Japan to escape persecution by British authorities. However, the Meiji government started cracking down on liberation movements after they renewed a treaty with the British. On 16 July 1907, Tarak reached Seattle. After earning his livelihood as a farm worker, he was appointed at the laboratory of the University of California, Berkeley, before enrolling himself as a student. Simultaneously, qualifying as translator and interpreter of the American Civil Administration, he entered the Department of Immigration, Vancouver, in January 1908. There he witnessed the arrival of William C. Hopkinson of the Calcutta Police Information Service, appointed as immigration inspector and interpreter for Hindi, Punjabi and Gurumukhi. During seven long years, until his assassination by a Sikh, Hopkinson was required to send detailed and regular reports to the Government of India about the presence of such student radicals as Tarak, and monitor a group of pro-British Sikh informants headed by Bella Singh. With Pandaranga Kankoye B. G. Tilak's emissary, Tarak founded the Indian Independence League. Adhar Laskar arrived from Calcutta with funds sent by Jatin Mukherjee also known as Bhaga Jatin, permitting Tarak to start his journal Free Hindustan in English, as well as its Gurumukhi edition, Swadesh Sevak Servants of the Motherland by Gurindit Kumar who came from Calcutta on 31 October 1907. Free Hindustan has been claimed by Constance Brissenden as the first South Asian publication in Canada, and one of the first in North America. They were assisted by Professor Surendra Mohan Bose, who was an expert in explosives. 
through regular correspondence, personalities like Tolstoy, Hinman, Shyamji Krishnavarma, Madam Kama, encouraged Tarak in his venture. Described as community spokesman, he had established Hindustani Association in Vancouver in 1907, fully conversant with existing laws. Tarak served the needs of his compatriots, most of whom were illiterate migrants from the Punjab region. In Millside, near New Westminster, he founded the Swadesh Sevak Home, a boarding school for the children of the Asian Indian immigrants. Apart from that, this school also held evening classes on English and mathematics, and thus helped the immigrants to write letters to their families or to their employers. This also helped them in fostering greater awareness of their duties towards India and their rights in their adopted homeland. There were about 2,000 Indians, mostly Sikh, on the west coast of Canada and North America. The majority worked in agriculture and construction. After an initial setbacks, these Indian farmers succeeded in obtaining a bumper crop of rice in California in the early 1910s, and a good number of them worked on the building of the Western Pacific Railway in California, along with indentured immigrants from China, Japan, Korea, Norway and Italy. Radicals like Tarak mobilized the Indian community to retaliate against anti-Indian violence and politics of exclusion. Being a suspect of extracting bribes from the Asian Indian immigrants, Hopkinson used his influence to make Tarak a scapegoat and eventually got him expelled from Canada by the middle of 1908. Leaving Bose, Kumar and Chagan Kairaj Varma also known as Hussain Rahim in charge of the compatriots' fate, Tarak left Vancouver to better concentrate on the areas from Seattle to San Francisco. On reaching Seattle, since its July 1908 issue, Free Hindustan became a more overtly anti-British organ, with a motto from Tarak, "...to protest against all tyranny as a service to humanity and the duty of civilization." The Irish revolutionary George Freeman of the NYC-based Gaelic American newspaper was looked upon as the real leader of the anti-British movement, closely connected with two Indians, Samuel L. Joshi and Barakatula. Invited by Fitzgerald, Tarak issued the August and the succeeding numbers of Free Hindustan from New York. In 1908, Tarak joined the Norwich University, Northfield, Vermont, a high-class engineering and military establishment, in order to receive military training. He also applied for enlistment, in the Vermont National Guard. Despite his popularity among the students of all ethnic origins, he was rusticated from that institution due to his anti-British activities such as editing Free Hindustan. By the end of 1909, he returned to Seattle. Topic: <laughs> Founding the Ghadar Party. A direct appeal to the Sikhs appeared in the September to October 1909 issue of the Free Hindustan reproduced by the Swadesh Sevak the article ended with coming in contact with free people and institutions of free nations some of the Sikhs the laborers in the North American continent have assimilated the idea of liberty and trampled the metals of slavery in March 1912 a letter published in the Punjabi asked for a leader to come and help organize Indians in the area in view of the rising revolutionary spirit Originally they discussed inviting Kumar and then Sardar Ajit Singh. However, when Tarak arrived he suggested inviting Lala Hardale, whom he knew from his days at Stanford University. Hardale agreed to work with him setting up the Hindi Association of the Pacific Ocean, which provided the first basis for the Ghadar Party. Many of the leaders were of other parties and from different parts of India, Hardale, Ras Bihari Bose, Barakatula, Seth Hussain Rahim, Tarak Nath Das and Vishnu Ganesh Pingli. The Ghadar was the first organized violent bid for freedom after the rising of 1857. Many hundreds paid the price with their lives," wrote Kushwant Singh. From Berlin to Kabul In 1914, he was admitted as a research fellow at the University of California at Berkeley. Tarak passed his MA examination and started his PhD dissertation on international relationship and international law, while joining the teaching staff of that university. He later earned his PhD degree from the University of Washington in political science. To have a greater freedom of action, in that year he also acquired American citizenship. 
With the help of professors like Robert Morse Lovett, Upham Pope, Arthur Ryder at UC Berkeley and David Starr Jordan and Stewart of Palo Alto of Stanford University, Tarak established the East India Association. He was invited by the International Students Association as a delegate of the American universities. He had already been informed about the Indo-German plan and in January 1915, met Varendranath Chattopadhyay in Berlin. For that meeting, Barakatullah and Hardale also arrived in Berlin. They all formed a close group to accompany Raja Mahendra Pratap in his Kabul expedition. In April 1916, the Shiraz ul Akbar of Kabul reproduced a speech by Tarak from a Constantinople paper. It praised the work of the German officers busy training the Ottoman army and the intrepidity and bravery of the Turks. He pointed out that it was Germany and Austria who declared war and not the Allies, and that their reason for doing so was to purify the earth of the brutal atrocities practiced on mankind by their enemies, and to save the unfortunate inhabitants of India, Egypt, Persia, Morocco and Africa from the English, French and Russians who had forcibly seized their countries and had reduced them to slavery. Tarak stressed the point that Turkey entered the war not only to defend her own country and to maintain her liberty, but also to put new life into 300 million Muslims, and to establish the Afghan state on a firmer basis, one that would act as a link with 350 million Indians, both Hindus and Muslims, as its supporters and helpers. Political, p. 304. Tarak returned to California in July 1916. After that he set out for Japan with the project of a vast study on Japanese expansion and its significance in world politics. This study appeared as a book in 1917 with the title, Is Japan a Menace to Asia? The foreword of this book was written by the former Chinese Prime Minister Tang Xiaoyi. In collaboration with Rash Bihari Bose and Harambalal Gupta, he was about to leave on a mission to Moscow, when Tarak was called back to appear in the infamous Hindu-German conspiracy trial. The all-white jury accused him as the most dangerous criminal, and it was proposed to withdraw his American citizenship and surrender him to the British police. On 30 April 1918, he was sentenced to 22 months in Leavenworth Federal Prison. <laughs> <laughs> Academic career After his release in 1924 Doss was in Williamstown, Mass. in the summers of 1921 and 1922, so he could not have been in prison until 1924, Tarak married his longtime friend and benefactress Mary Keating Morse. She was a founding member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the National Woman's Party. With her, he went on an extended tour of Europe. He made Munich his headquarters for his activities. It was there that he founded the India Institute that awarded scholarships to meritorious Indian students who pursued higher studies in Germany. He maintained a close contact with Sri Aurobindo, and pursued inner spiritual discipline. On his return to the United States, Tarak was jointly appointed as the Professor of Political Science at the Columbia University and a Fellow of the Georgetown University. With his wife, he opened the resourceful Taraknath Das Foundation in 1935, to promote educational activities and to foster cultural relations between the U.S. and Asian countries. The Taraknath Das Foundation Currently, this foundation awards grant money to Indian graduate students studying in the United States, who have completed or are about to complete one year of graduate work, and are working towards a degree. There are Tarak Nath Das funds at about a dozen universities in the States. Only the fund at Columbia University, called the Mary Keating Das Fund, has a fairly significant amount of money in it and the income is used to fund lectures and conferences on India. Other participatory universities are the University of Pittsburgh, New York University, the University of Washington, the University of Virginia, Howard University, Yale University, the University of Chicago, the University of Michigan, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, American University, and the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Later life Tarak was among those who suffered emotionally from the partition of India in 1947 and vehemently opposed the process of balkanization of South Asia till his last day. After 46 years in exile, he revisited his motherland in 1952, as a visiting professor of the Watamal Foundation. 
He founded the Vivekananda Society in Calcutta. On 9 September 1952, he presided over the public meeting to celebrate the 37th anniversary of Bhaga Jatin's heroic martyrdom, urging the youth to revive the values upheld by his mentor, Jatinda. He died upon return to the United States on of December 1958, aged 74. <laughs> 